going on, everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for once again another episode review of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. This is season six, episode 16, Showstopper. Before we get into the review, a couple of real quick church announcements. If you haven't done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. It won't cost you nothing, it's free as hell. Before you leave, let me know what you think about this video. Give me a thumbs up. It would be much appreciated. And then also make sure you have your notifications turned on. Make sure that notification bell is on so you will know whenever I upload new content. I also want to remind you guys to follow me on my social media platforms. I'm on um, Instagram is Moyo512. Twitter is NikkiShawn512. Yeah, Nikki Sean 512 and then my Facebook page is Mohambone TV. I forget, damn. I forget every goddamn time. Um, this episode of Love and Hip Hop was okay. A little uneventful, but entertaining all the same. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to make this video too long because I am very tired. I'm ready to take my black ass to bed. And I done already had two glasses of Moscato. No, this ain't number two, this is number three. But I'm at home, and my child is asleep, and I can goddamn do that. So hopefully y'all are ready for the review, because I'm ready to give it to you, so let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all, so Yo-Yo, Apple Watch, and Brittany B, they all over at Yo-Yo house. She having like this little barbecue or whatever, right? Apple's, I mean, not Apple, what's her name? Yo-Yo's daughters are there. Her one daughter about to pop. I mean, she looks uncomfortable as fuck. Fuck, she pregnant as hell. They over there, you know, having a little chit chat, a little girl talk, or whatever. And then, um, what was it? Yo Yo asked uh, Brittany B how did things go with her meeting up with her mom. And so Brittany B says that um, she feels like she has to thank Apple because Apple was basically the push and the inspiration behind her, you know, really meeting up with her mom and having a conversation with her mom. And so her mother invited her to church. And so, you know what I'm saying? She said she's going to try to go to church, work it out with her mom and see how all that shit go, right? So, um, Yo-Yo then asked Apple Watch what happened to you because you remember they was out supposed to get in the studio. Well, apparently Apple Watch didn't show up to the session, but Britney B showed up. So, um, Britney B and uh, Yo-Yo did this little record. They played a little snippet of the record. It's a little bop or whatever. I don't see it selling out on no platforms or nothing like that because it's not bad. Like I said, it's a little bop, but that's, that's really all it is, is a little bop or whatever, right? And so, um... Child Apple Watch say <laughs> she had a motherfucking check to cash and when she get that money in her hand, that shit gotta go some goddamn way. I be fucking itching. I feel you. That's why when I get a check or something, I gotta go put that shit in my bank. Uh-uh. No, I can't fucks with it. So I completely understand that. But um Yo-Yo says that she wants to help Apple Watch, but she's going to stand in her own damn way. And that's another example right there. Like, you got goddamn sponsors that don't want to work with you. You ain't showing up to goddamn basically free sessions to do some shit, even though it might not skyrocket and take off. But bitches better than what you're doing. I mean, you can't clap your ass cheeks all your life. You know what I'm saying? At a certain age, you got to be tired of boot scooting your ass across that floor and you got to want something more stable for yourself. And this might be something that could help you even if you can't get out there and rap bitch you can learn how to produce a track or something like that but child you can't coochie scoot across the floor for all your goddamn life so i'm gonna need you to do something about that and then on another thing y'all um britney b's outfits was not flattering to her body i don't know if all of those curves are genetically hers or if they are surgically enhanced Either way it goes, she needs to wear things that are flattering to her body. Trust me, I know. I'm 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 a thick chick myself, and I know what to goddamn wear. And that's oh no, ma'am, that that was not flattering at all. Zells is having this fashion show slash performance listening party. He's trying to knock all that shit out at once. You know what I'm saying? Get the fashions out there. Get the music out there. We finna turn this motherfucker and make some motherfucking money. I ain't mad at you. You know what I'm saying? Get out there and do your goddamn thing, brother. He said, I'm finna get you hoes dressed and get you, give you something to move your head to and bop out to this bitch at the same damn time. I ain't mad at yourselves. You get your goddamn entrepreneurship on, goddamn it. Um, what's that? Paris comes in. Child, Paris looks so fucking uncomfortable in the goddamn dress she had on. She looked like a flashy Ursher lady at church. 
Cause the, the 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 I guess she was you know I don't know if she was guess I guess she was the MC so she had to be coordinated with the rest of the fashion line which the fashion line was it was okay you know what I'm saying it was okay you know it wasn't bad I'm not saying that it wasn't bad but I just expected something completely different I guess and so it wasn't bad I'd rock a free piece. Would I pay for it? Well, it depends. It depends. Now, believe me, I'm all in support of black businesses. Trust me. I'm black by popular demand. I get that. I support black businesses. But, you know what I'm saying? It got to be some shit I like. I'm not fit to support you just because you're black. No, I'm not that kind of pro-black. I'm. It got to be some good shit. I'm sorry. I'm not going to put no money into the shit just because you're black. I'd be damned if I buy some fucking Yeezys. That basic ass shit. But I'd take a free pair and support you that way, my brother. So next thing you know, child, Mr. Ray shows up and he got Trisha's annoying ass with him. Y'all know Trisha, the one that talks like this, like really bad. And, and she just has this annoying ass voice. Imagine her and goddamn Lacey from Love After Lockup, having a conversation. Do you know how fucking irritating that damn conversation would be? Oh, my God. I'd want to scratch my own fucking skin off in a conversation with either one of them because that would be an annoying-ass conversation. But, so, you know, Zell's is coming now. You know, he did his, the, the uh, models did their little fashion walk or whatever. So, Zell's is on the mic, and he's thanking everybody. Next thing you know, Trish kind of get um, she kind of gets into it with one of A1's homeboys. Now, apparently, he bumped her. Now, I don't know why she went off like that. I don't know if he snapped at her, what it was, but they kind of start getting into it, but she gets really loud. Loud enough to basically talk over Zells and him being on the fucking microphone. Now, he on the mic, he like, hey, 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 like, calm down. Is y'all cool? Y'all straight? She's like, yeah, we're good. This is your thing. You go ahead and speak. This guy was just being an asshole, but yeah, go ahead and continue. Like, just kind of being, I mean, uh, again, she didn't have to react the way that she did. Again, I don't know if maybe he snapped on her. If he said, fuck you, bitch, kiss my ass, suck my dick. I don't know if that's what he said to her. Now, if he said that to her, I get that. You know what I'm saying? But that's when you don't talk, you slap shit out of him. But they exchange words. And once again, they start going at it and getting loud again to where Zells is on the mic and he's yelling. He's like, hey, look here. This is my shit. Y'all need to be paying attention to me. I can't be talking over nobody. Everybody, everybody needs to pay attention to me. He kind of started to get like a little brat a little bit. I was like, ugh, stop. It's not a good look. So... Trisha gets upset, and she ends up leaving. She was like, no, look here. I'm sick of this shit. I'm not finna deal with this shit. Like, this old ghetto-ass, ratchet-ass shit, I'm not finna deal with this. So she gets up, and she walks out, and she leaves. Mr. Ray goes out there after her, and he ends up talking her into coming back in the party and having some drinks. So they end up going to the bar. She orders some, what was it, some uh, 1942. And Mr. Ray makes this little remark, um, was like, that sounds like the number of women that A1 has slept with. Real shady, shady, shady ass remark, right? So afterwards, after Zell, Zell performs his song, which the song was like, oh my God. Oh my God, something like that. I don't know. It was, it was okay. Again, I don't see it selling out on anything, but he, he did his own shit. He put his own money into it. He did his own everything. So you can't like knock, knock that nigga for getting out there and doing his thing thing. He did his thing thing. Well, I support it. If it's free, I absolutely will but moving on from that so afterwards everybody's like sitting down he comes over he says what's up to everybody whatever so he's going around hugging everybody he gets ready to hug trisha and he's like oh no see i don't want to talk to you i'm mad at you he's pissed off because he thinks that she just was pissed off and that she left well she was pissed but she, i think she was kind of embarrassed by it as well so she ended up you know leaving or whatever 
So she was like, oh, no, no. Listen here, honey. I'm trying to tell you this. So long story short, her and Zell's ends up getting into it where she ends up getting pissed off and she leaves. Well, Mr. Ray once again goes out there after her. And as he's going out there after her to talk to her and calm her down, Zell's is talking to A1, Paris, Tierra Marie. Um, who else was there? Mickey Monday. And it was somebody else that was there, right? Then Zell's brings up... I don't know why Mr. Ray is here. Last time I seen Mr. Ray was at the bowling alley and he was saying that he didn't think A1 was really Ocean's dad. Yeah, that's what I heard him say. Real messy. Y'all know Zell's is messy, messy, messy boots and he loves to see some goddamn drama go down. So as he's telling him this, goddamn uh, Mr. Ray is walking back inside after having walked um, Trisha ass outside because she just got into it with Zell's. So he's walking back completely blind to what the hell is going on. As he's walking up, Tierra Marie is going off on him because um, after Zell said that, everybody's like, what? Did he really say that? Like, they couldn't believe this motherfucker said that, right? So as he's walking back up, Tierra Marie is going off on him. She's like, hey, did you really say this? That you didn't think that a1 was Ocean's dad? Like, why would you say that? He's like, hold on. I didn't say that to be malicious. This is what I heard here. I heard this from the streets. The streets is talking. And I read this here and read that there. Which, look here. It's one thing if you don't know these people at all. You don't, you've don't. you never met them a day in your life. And you're speaking on something that you read. But you're speaking on some people that you know. You know what they've been through. You know where they at now and where they trying to work through. And not only that, you see that goddamn baby. He is the papa. He looked just like his goddamn daddy. So for you to say something like that, you wrong as hell for that. Baby, next thing you know, everybody's going off on Mr. Ray. A1 slightly creeps his ass over there and was like, did you ever think about the repercussions that could happen if you said something about my son? Mr. Ray was like, no. See, what I was saying was, stop. Zell smacks the shit out of uh, Mr. Ray. Mr. Ray ends up falling back on the couch. And he was like, oh, but no. Oh, my God. Did you just hit me? He looked like a white woman in distress when he slapped his ass. He smacked the shit out of his ass. He looked like Susan. He looked like Celie. God damn it. He looked like... You just smacked the shit out of Amy and she's finna go tell on your ass. She's calling the fucking cops right now. That's exactly what the hell he looked like. Lord, the security had to come. They actually had to tell Mr. Ray, you need to leave so that we can defuse the situation. Now, as Mr. Ray is being escorted out, he's like, mm -hmm, I'm going to defuse the situation. All right, I know where he lives. Motherfucker, you ain't finna bust a grape in a food fight. And we already know that. This one part that I did leave out from that, Trisha actually ended up getting into it with Zell's girls. Um, What's her name? Summer Divine or... I don't know, cheesecake, I don't know, strawberry, something like that is a goddamn name. She ended up getting into it with Trisha, girl. And then she ended up getting into it damn near with Lyrica. I was like, oh, I'd like to see that fight right there. Because <laughs> we all know Lyrica ain't finna bust a grape in a food fight her damn self either. So, child, they end up having to tell uh, Mr. Ray to leave because shit just went left. Child, then the next thing you know, um, that's when Summer Divine, I feel like the chick's name is Summer Divine. Her and Lyrica get into it because she says that they basically bullied Mr. Ray because he smacked him out of nowhere. He didn't even see that coming. Child, so they kind of get up in each other's face. Um, A1 and Lyrica end up walking out hand in hand because now they in love. I'm like, look at this old silly ass shit right here. Child, this don't make no fucking sense. So we got Mickey Monday. He's shooting the video or whatever, right? April and Fizz end up showing up. I guess now they, they a package deal. Wherever you see one, you're going to see the other one now, I guess. Child, get the fuck on some goddamn well. So... Fizz tells Mickey Monday that he is shooting, um, he's shooting a movie, y'all. He gonna be the star. He gonna be the EP, the background man, the sound check man, the atmosphere, the extra <laughs> craft services. He gonna be everything on the goddamn movie. He says he wants Mickey to do a couple of tracks that's on the movie. Because I guess the movie's supposed to be him. He's in some kind of gangster role where he's fucking with some, some stripper chick or something like that. So he wants Mickey to come through and do some music on that. Mickey down for it. Of course, y'all know Mickey. Anything he can do to make a couple of bucks to try to get his goddamn music out there, he gonna goddamn do it. Now, um... 
Fizz does um, tell them that he has the opportunity to go international and do the B2K Millennium Tour, but Omarion is kind of holding back on everything. He don't know if he want to do it, and so that's kind of stopping the bag. So he says that he got to holler at Omarion or whomever because Omarion don't talk straight to them. He communicates everything through management. I want to talk to your bitch ass thing, especially if you ain't mad enough to come and talk to me. To hell with you. I'm gonna play this goddamn role with your ass too. So he said he gotta go talk to to J Bug or whomever. He cause he gotta try to secure the fucking bag so they can go on the tour. Nigga, you wanna secure the bag? You need to say, oops, I did it. I fell in the coup. Cool. I didn't mean to do it. My bad. So we got Zells and um, Paris. They're at the boxing ring because, you know, Paris is trying to take her little weight loss thing serious or whatever, right? With a full beat face full of makeup. Bitch, come on now. Really? So they're at the boxing ring working out. Jay Boog ends up showing up. And so um, they have a little conversation. They tell Jay Boog about everything that happened when Mr. Ray got to the piss slapped out his ass by A1. And then um, Jay Boog says that um, he's seen Zell's clothing line He's seen it online somewhere, and so he enjoyed the pictures and everything, and so the clothing line was lit. I'm like... Now, he said he got to go holla at Drew because he feels like Omarion and his, is in his feelings because of everything that's going on between him and April. Now, at the same time, you got Raz B that's going over here. He going batshit crazy, so he's got that to worry about as well. Now, he says at least one thing that he can try to hopefully control is... Just fizz hopefully taking part or you know taking responsibility in his part on where he's kind of been deceptive in this whole goddamn thing and the whole situation and the animosity that's going on between the b the two and the k so he ends up going and he meets up with fizz in the studio uh fizz is in the studio with mickey monday because um they're in there working on like a little strip club music for his uh, movie he got coming up. I want to see this shit. It's going to be a fucking Triple Crown production ass movie. His ass going to be goddamn doing. But um, he ends up meeting up with Fizz. And so he basically says to Fizz like, look here. You know, do you think that this situation between you and April has anything to do with why Omarion probably does not want to go international with this, you know, this whole tour and, and all of this. Like, you know what I'm saying? What, what are we going to do here with this? But Fizz basically tells him, like, look here, I'm going to do, you know, what I can and, you know, hopefully, you know, things are going to work out and all of this. I'm like, Lord, have, have. Fizz is not going to take responsibility for anything he did wrong. He don't feel like he did anything wrong. He feels like everybody's just supposed to be happy with him and what he got going on. And that is that. It's like, bruh, if you can't acknowledge where you went wrong, fucking this hoe, then there's something wrong with you. Brittany B ends up going to church with her mama. No, they end up going to Bible study. And it just so... <laughs> Conveniently, the preacher is doing a, a sermon about forgiveness and it's fitting to a T everything that's going on in their lives. Like, like production didn't go up to him and whisper in his ear, uh, maybe you can do uh, such and such from such and such chapter this and this. Yeah, I'm going to need you to spin off on that. Child stop it y'all doing the most but they do you know recognize where they have issues where they both went wrong and so they basically you know both want to work on their relationship and i thought it was a a, a real touching mother and and daughter scene to see because you don't never want to see no woman going at it with her mother like your mama as a woman your mama is your everything your, your pride and joy, goddammit. So to be going through it with your mama, that's got to be hard as hell. So they hug it out, and they agree to go through therapy and, you know, try to work on their relationship. Um, What else happened? Uh, Yo-Yo's daughter ends up having um her son. I think his name is Kai. Beautiful baby boy. That heifer was in labor for 21 hours. Bitch, are you crazy? <sighs> No ma'am, no ma'am, no handle. Spam. I was in labor for 11 hours and I thought to myself, God, what did I do wrong? Why hast thou forsaken me? Why me, Lord? Why me? I didn't understand that. So you add some more. Oh. oh. All right, y'all. So we got Britney B, Apple Watch. Um, Who else was it? Mr. Ray 
and Trisha. Yeah, they all meet up and they have some drinks or whatever. And they're, of course, you know, putting um, Brittany B and Apple Watch on to what happened at the damn fashion show that Zells was having. And so, you know, he told him how he got the piss slapped out of him. And so Apple Watch wants to mediate a conversation between Mr. Ray and A1 in hopes that they'll be able to work out their relationship. Now, at this little <laughs> gathering of the girls, Mr. Ray dropped some tea that a um, Lyrica got a whole nother nigga that she's out here talking to or whatever, right? So later on, Apple Watch and Mr. Ray go to meet with A1. Um, now, Mr. Ray is still pissed off. His panties is still in a bunch because he's pissed off about A1 slapping shit out of him, right? So as soon as he, as he walks up, there's this drink that's on that child. He picks up the, like a fucking female, picks up the drink and douses A1 in the drink. And some of it lands on Apple One. Surprisingly, I mean Apple Watch. Surprisingly, Apple Watch took this drink being thrown on her a lot better than she did when Paris did it. And it looks like this fucking drink damn near drowned her ass like she was up in this shit. I don't know. It didn't even seem like it was that bad when Paris did it, but this one seemed fucking bad. She took that shit like a G. She wasn't ready to pop off on his ass. That's neither here nor there. But then again, we all know Apple Watch could... You think a one slap shit out your ass. Goddamn Apple Watch will beat the brakes off your goddamn ass. We don't want to see that happen for you. But, you know, A1 took that shit. He was like, you know what I'm saying? You know, it is what it is. I had that coming to me, you know, whoop de whoop, yada, yada. I appreciate that. So they end up talking it out. And Mr. Ray's whole thing was, you were there for me when Zell's punched the shit out of me a couple years ago. You were there and you stood up for me. Why now would you turn around and do the exact same thing that he did to me? Like, why would you do that to me now? Like, that makes no sense to me. And so, A1 does apologize. Like he said, he got a lot going on in his relationship and his personal life. So, he apologizes for that. Now, Mr. Ray does drop the T on him. He says that when him and Lyrica and somebody else were all together, that Lyrica actually said out of her mouth that she co-parents with A1, but she got a whole nother nigga that she dealing with. Now, A1 says that what him and Lyrica got, don't nobody else need to understand and know this, that and the other, that he love his family, that, you know what I'm saying, it's ride or die between them. He ain't worried about nothing that nobody got to say. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is with them. And child, y'all, the episode pretty much ended from there. Did it end from there? Yeah, it ended from there. Y'all, this episode was okay. It was pretty much uneventful. Not a whole lot went on, but I do hope that I provided you all with a good review. Okay, um, if there was anything that I forgot, y'all already know. Drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'm fresh out of wine. <laughs> I'm going to take my ass to bed, and Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.